Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. I recently uploaded a video with 10 Japanese films from the 1950s that you should watch. Well, here are 10 more. Let's do it. The Ghost of Kasane Swamp, 1957. This is a horror drama. So after being brutally murdered by a samurai, a man's spirit haunts the neighboring village to exact his vengeance in this film by Nobuo Nakagawa. Now this is a very cool flick for a number of reasons. Firstly, the camera work uses some simplistic, albeit very effective, techniques during the hauntings that emphasize trickery and misdirection. It's pretty interesting to see the different methods that the ghost uses to accomplish its goals. And these methods would be used frequently in other samurai era horror films that followed this one. The acting is spot on and the short runtime of 67 minutes helps to keep things moving. This is one of the first samurai horror films I ever saw, so it kind of holds a special place in my memories. Sancho the Bailiff, 1954. This is a drama. Kenji Mitsoguchi directs this harrowing film about the hard life of slavery in medieval Japan. After a compassionate governor is sent into exile, his children grow up amid suffering and depression. Direction and visuals are top-notch, it actually won the Silver Lion for Best Direction at the 15th Venice International Film Festival. The conflicts and dramatic elements are good too. Considered a classic by many, this is frequently ranked up there with Ugetsu as one of Mitsuguchi's best films. Lightning, 1952. This is a drama. A young woman, played by Hideko Takamine, attempts to find happiness amidst the dysfunctional relationships that surround her. So marriage in this film is depicted as kind of a futile attempted at love, and most everyone leads an unhappy existence. But this is still very enjoyable, with realistic conflicts that keep the viewer emotionally invested. Takamine is excellent in this lead role, and she is extremely likable, despite her character's outward distaste for men. Another solid effort from Mikio Narose. Throne of Blood, 1957. This is a drama. Akira Kurosawa directs this rumination on Shakespeare's tragic Macbeth, which features uh, a dark samurai drama about two soldiers who rise to power. So the opening 20 minutes especially have an extremely atmospheric, foggy forest setting that is quite memorable, and the fog returns multiple times throughout the film. The castle exteriors were actually built and shot on Mount Fuji, mostly due to the desired landscape and the frequent fog that uh, surrounds there. If you've ever been to Mount Fuji or, if you, or you've seen pictures, you know there's a pretty good chance that it, it will be enveloped in fog and clouds most of the time. So it was a good location spot for this film. Characters, story, and performances are all good. In fact, I think Toshiro Mifune is even better here than in some of his other collaborations with Kurosawa. Very cool flick. <clears throat> Early Summer, 1951, this is a drama. This is the story of a young woman who is being pressured to marry by her family members. The most entertaining moments come by way of the various discussions and debates over marriage, which are frequently humorous. Setsuko Hara single-handedly carries this movie with her fresh, playful, and wise demeanor. Her interactions with the various family members are very good. This is actually one of my personal favorites from Yasujiro Ozu. Older Brother, Younger Sister, 1953, it's a drama. The eldest daughter of a rural family comes home pregnant, which strains the relationships between the family members and results in the family being ostracized by their fellow townspeople. Mikiru Narose, again, offers some uh, nice camera work, and the acting is great from everyone, but I particularly enjoyed Yoshiko Kuga's performance as the sister San. So, Narusei's better films, in my opinion, are usually driven by very strong conflicts, and this is no exception, as it contributes to some intensely dramatic moments. Crazed Fruit, 1956. This is a drama romance. Two brothers compete for the amorous favors of a young woman during a seaside summer of gambling, boating, and drinking. Everything here is pretty straightforward in this film, but the conflict is nicely executed because of its ability to provoke some emotion from the viewer along the way. 
The lead actress is definitely a cutie, and the ending is a satisfying one. This film was, uh, I've read, controversial upon release because of its depiction of Japanese youth, and it was directed by Ko Nakahira, who is not exactly a household name in the States nowadays, but he was pretty important back in the day. I mean, Crazed Fruit served as one of the first Japanese films to have the traits of the coming new wave film movement at the time, which uh, we're going to cover uh, quite a few films from that in, uh, as I continue this playlist when we get to the 1960s. A Geisha, 1953, this is a drama. In the post-war Gion district of Kyoto, the Geisha, Miyoharu, agrees to apprentice the 16-year-old Eiko, whose mother was a former Geisha who had just died. Conflict arises when the geisha house attempts to force the girl into sleeping with a rich businessman as compensation for secretly financing her career. Now this movie definitely showcases the difficulties that these ladies suffered through while attempting to earn a living without compromising their self-respect. And this is another fine film from Kenji Mitsoguchi that has very good performances and character interaction. A Japanese Tragedy, 1953 now, this is alternating in time between the end of World War II and 1953, and a widow becomes a prostitute to give her daughter and son a stable life. But unfortunately, the children rebel against her ways when they become adults and find out what she's doing. So this is quite a sad film, since the plights and sacrifices of the mother are not exactly appreciated by many of the characters here. This film by Keizuke Kinoshita has good conflict, fine performances, and a few memorable moments that you'll take home with you. Fires on the Plain, 1959. This is a war drama. A Japanese soldier flees from American forces during World War II. The melodramatic elements of this film are a bit heavy-handed at times. In fact, I actually disliked this film the first time I saw it, but I gave it a second chance years later and I enjoyed it a lot more. It's nicely shot and engaging for the most part, but the harrowing conditions that are depicted may rub some viewers the wrong way. It gets pretty intense. This film by Kon Ichikawa was released to mixed responses from critics in 1959, but it has since become a highly acclaimed film that's now represented uh, in the Criterion Collection of all places. So check this one out as well, if it sounds like it's something you can handle. So there you have it. 10 more Japanese films from the 1950s that you should watch. The titles of these films are all listed in the description box below. Again, in this playlist, I'm not restricting myself to films that are immediately available, so I'm not even providing availability info, uh, because most of the films I saw years ago, and uh, availability changes over time, and quite frequently. My usual method, though, for checking availability on these films is just Google them, and you'll usually find somewhere where you can find them. I know some of them are on the Criterion channel. Off the top of my head, I'm not, I don't remember which titles were. Some might even be on YouTube if you search and uh, other notable streaming sites. And some of them are still available on physical media, especially some of the popular ones. So remember, we're going to cover the 1960s next, so be ready for it. As always, we'll see you next time.